aging face that this world has forgotten. Mm. What is up, guys? And of course, welcome to another Pokemon Wi Fi battle with your triple course, the Scarander. And today, going up against, of course, Basim in another, of course, Wi Fi battle here where we are facing up against some real offense right here. Now, the thing that stood out was, of course, Porygon C, you know, the conversion barrier that was like, oh shit, this is definitely not gonna work for me whatsoever. And then, of course, that Slowbro, which is potentially a trick room sitter, and the good with the leg of, of course, the. Vicavolt and Tapabolo, it might actually not be considered such a bad idea having Trick Room in mind. Vicavolt, super super interesting and very tough to deal with. Then we got Mimikyu, which basically is his anti-sweep Pokemon for this kind of situation that I'm bringing because he can take a few hits and he can definitely of course set up against me. And of course a Guard Chomp, and Guard Chomp is always frustrating to deal with because of that niche speed. Now, I myself is using of course the Gust Lord. Which is a Scarf variant, it's not a very good set, but it's very fun to use when it comes to, of course, our speeding and beast boosting. Having that said, not a good set. Uh, then I got, of course, Lurantis, Jolteon, Alolan Dug Trio, Gigalith, and of course, Stoutland or Fulf. And from the get-go here, I felt that my, um, <laughs> my um, Gustler was my best bet because it could do the most amount of damage in short time, so basically I felt like I would speed everything and could probably snag a KO because since I am Scarfed, I will hopefully outspeed everything on the team and if you start with Slowbro and go for Trick Room, I can go for Potential Crunch and do a 2-hit KO on him. So anyway, with of course all of this said, let's go. So from the get-go of course, I'm going to lead off with of course Cookies, or of course the Gust Lord, as he's going to lead off with Porygon C, and I was like, oh no, not a lead sweep, you kidding me? So anyway, I really don't have nothing to do here, I really need to go for the damage up, so I go directly for Dragon Claw. It's not a 50% hit, sadly, which is unfortunate, but at the same time here, he will actually go for conversion and not change typing, mainly showing me that he's an adaptability set, which is good, because that means it's very likely that he'll go for a Tron Attack at this time, so I can just bring my Salt Vest Gigalith and soak whatever he decides to go for. I know I'm kind of fine for this kind of position. Uh, so he's gonna go for an Ice Beam, which is great since it actually won't do anything. I mean, that's boosted and all, but that's not gonna work. And Heavy Slam easily a KO here, and I know that. So predicting him to um, switch out here, I'm just gonna go for the most amount of damage as I can do. And the best way we are doing that is going directly for a Stone Edge. And it does okay amount of damage on that slow bro. Now here's the thing, I'm not particularly scared of Skull, but of course the Sandstream is still going. So I could be free here going for of course the damage I put, but I was feeling Skull is definitely gonna come. So I might as well bring Cookies and basically soak whatever damage he goes for. Now he goes for Call Mind. And this is basically where I was like, okay, so not a Trick Room then, clearly. And, um,. I really need to go for super effective damage and crunch is like super obvious and I know that is my number one hit to go for or I could predict his switch out and go for Southland and I can tell you guys this much I do decide to go in go for crunch and I'll see you know it's so close of killing it's definitely a bit too short for a shot for KO but it's up there but I know that he's definitely going to switch out the next time so knowing that, that I will get actually an unfortunate crit against me which clearly makes sure the Sandstrip will KO me next turn. So I'm feeling that, you know, I could, or I'm pretty sure he's gonna switch out, so I might as well bring my Southland. And um, actually, it comes down that he actually is sacking this Pokemon, he wanted me to fall to the sand, and goes for another Ice Beam. And I can soak this, it's Southland after all, but I am going to do a bit of a dumb play here. I go to Rickliff for that Bandit Return, fully aware of that he has a Mimikyu, and what comes in? Well, of course, the Mimikyu, because why not? So, I am not in a good position here, because I can, can't can switch out moves here, and I know he can just really start just setting up against me. So I'm gonna bring Vulcan back in here, I'm just gonna try to break his, uh, his disguise, and basically force him for a Shadow Sneak or Shadow Claw. Now he'll go for a Sword Stance, and like I said, that's fine, there's really nothing you can do. I know I can take at least one player up from this thing, I, I'm bulky enough to pull that off, but whether or not I fall afterwards, it's pretty dark clear that that's gonna, how it's gonna go down. But luckily for me, he just keeps setting up, which means that I go for Heavy Slam, and I'm of course gonna break that Sash. But here I had to make a call. My best call here was to actually sack my 
my cookies or of course my gust lore because it's naturally gonna fall anyway and it's not gonna be overly important to this game. So sacking it and bringing in Stoutland was my well best play really. But it is unfortunate because uh, I really really was wanting to use Gustler much much more this game but it just wasn't meant to be with this matchup in mind. So with that said, I'm gonna bring of course my Southland. I know a player up could easily KO from this area. It's definitely up there with of course Banner and whatnot as he can't go for Shadow Sneaks. I go for player off. <sighs> but no. Sadly, we do not KO here and that's really bad mainly because of course I lose Southland which could do a massive amount of damage on his team since I still got the Elite active with of course the Sand Stream. So I messed that up and sadly I lose my Stoutland right there even though the Sand take him out. So anyway, I'm gonna bring my actually Alolan Duck Trio and Alolan Duck Trio is able to do a fair amount of damage on the plethora of his team and with of course the Sand Stream up, I'm doing a lot of damage. I'm basically killing everything in my path. So the Sand Stream will subside sadly and he's gonna bring Japanese name which of course is the Guard Chomp. And uh, I, I'm not one here for sacking my mom, like definitely not, so the only thing I can do is bring Gigalith and try to get a free switch in for my, uh, what do you call it, my Jolteon, because at this time I really, really need to hope that this variant is a Scarf, because if it's Scarf, that's GG, there is really nothing you can do with this Garchomp whatsoever, Scarf, Garchomp ruins my team from this point out, but we see the life for it, I was like, yeah, that means Jolteon comes in, <laughs> and I've hit him Power Eyes, so that's all I'm gonna do, um, I felt that I was really predictable by of course knowing, or it would make no sense for me not using that move. Uh, so a bit of a misplay on my opponent's side, of course, staying in here because that was a big risk it took there, considering that it was super obvious that I was carrying the power eyes. So anyway, he's gonna bring Vicar Volt, and um, let's just say this, there is really nothing I can do against the Vicar Volt, so I'm just gonna go for a free Volt Switch, and I'll do okay amount of damage, but I'm gonna basically go to my Tug Trio and uh, hope I can take whatever hits he goes for and risk Yala with a Stone Edge, because with, of course, the Sandstream still going, I'm feeling pretty darn powerful. As he goes for an energy ball, that almost KOs me. <laughs> I do survive it, but it almost KOs me. And I will just retaliate with a course with a Stone Edge. I'm not going to mess up another Earthquake situation where I basically go for an Earthquake and just and I was like, oh no, not going to happen. I've learned from my mistakes. But here's the thing. I can't lose Doug Trio as of yet. I need a Doug Trio for one situation, and that is his Tapu Bolo. And knowing that, basically, should go, I have to go to Relan Palgo or my Jolteon, and basically here hope that he brings in his um, Tapu Bolo from here on out. Uh, I can freely go for a Volt Switch here. I have to go for a Volt Switch. There is really nothing else I can do, as um, he's definitely gonna switch out. Bolo is his switching. Like, there is no way he should play this thing differently. And all I'm hoping is that this isn't a banded version. Because if this is a banded uh, type of Bolo, I'm, I'm pretty much screwed here. I should go for Shadow Bolt. How about that? Huh. I actually forgot about that. So, anyway, uh, I was like I said, I was fearing that it could be a banded version. So, all I really could do here was keep going for pressure. I'm pretty surprised I didn't go for a Volt Switch. That was kind of super obvious. So, I'm going to go for Hidden Power Eyes. Ah, how about that? Sorry about messing that up. I was actually forcing him down HP in case it was a... Uh, would have reversion, I'm definitely smarter than I remember. Anyway, so <laughs> clearly um, he could be a banded version, we don't know that yet, but that HP is definitely down there, which is great. And now I'm just gonna bring my Lorantis, and all I'm basically gonna do here is go for a C move Sunny Day, hoping that I'm able to outspeed him, which I'm not. And this Horn Leech will do a lot of damage, but definitely not a lot to KO. And like I said, had it been Woodhammer, it might as very well have killed me. But at this point, uh, just going for that C move is gonna be such an immense help for me. And mainly because that means I am plus one in speed, but also that with the Sunny Day up, I am now access to the powerful move that is Sunny or Weather Ball, which is now a fire move. So knowing that, I can just freely go for, of course, the Weather Ball, and that's gonna easily KO the Bolo. And um, if he were a Scarf variant, which I'm pretty sure he wasn't, that would still have been real unfortunate because my dog crew would not have been able to outspeed it either. But we're definitely gonna KO, of course, Tokotaro or the Tapu Bulu. And his last Pokemon is, of course, the Slowbro. But there is really nothing Slowbro can do from this point on because Leaf Storm, in, of course, the grassy terrain, is a very, very easy KO. So 
Thank you so much for this battle. This was definitely a really, really fun one, mainly because there were so many shifts of momentum, and Basim, you really did a very, very good game here. But if I had to leave, of course, a few after falls, all that really you know, comes to my mind is, of course, the Garchomp situation. Definitely losing against Jolteon was probably the tougher place. Uh, but then again, I don't think I actually did the ideal place either. I mean, losing, of course, my stuff. I definitely believe that was, of course, a, a role against Mimikyu. But at the same time, I do believe I kind of messed up there. And I won't really necessarily deny that because being able to spam return with Southland from that point on would have been a, a lot more helpful for me. But losing that kind of enforced that you know, I'm probably going to lose. And definitely what, if Garchomp wasn't scoffed, which it clearly wasn't, had it been that, that would have been a much, much tougher situation. So I'm really glad that that did not transpire. Uh, having that said, you know, there, it comes down to you know, the colder predictions at the end there. And uh, I played a bit weird with my Yolteon. I was definitely surprised I didn't go for a Volt Switch against the type of Bolo. But at the same time, at that point, I do realize I would have an abandoned version at that probably KO Lorantis anyway. So I did the ideal place there, even though I'm not necessarily remember them being the ideal place, but definitely they were the best place at that series of time. And of course, keeping a Lowland Duck reactive in case I mess up, of course, against uh, Tapa Bulu. Having that said, it comes down to, like I said, the last few plays, and uh, while I do win it, I won't necessarily say that, you know, I had the game under control, but I definitely feel my opponent base him had that massive control for most of the game. I just basically come on the top at the end because of the colder plays at those last turns. So anyway, thank you so much, of course, everybody for watching. Hope you enjoyed this game. And uh, yeah, next video will come up on Sunday. And it's going to be TBU related. So stay tuned for that, everyone. So thank you, of course, so much for watching, guys. And I'll see you in the next video. Until then, of course, take care.